Welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards. Today, we have a dope interview with Jai Alatas. He is one of the founders of the Creative Futures Collective. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. I'm just, I'm really stoked because this show is about transformation. It's about transforming ourselves and it's about transforming our world to make all of it better ourselves, our world, just by doing it to ourselves, we do it for our world. And today we're going to talk to someone who is a game changer on a grand scale. He is making a difference that's going to ripple out for years and years to come. And I find it very inspiring to hear how he got his start and how he made things happen. You know, so many times we think, no, we need an investment. We need this. We need that. You know what? Jai did it Both times, both successful businesses he has created just by starting and starting somewhere. And I find that to be ultra inspiring because so many times we think we need to have these things in order before we can start. Well, you don't. And he even created a whole nonprofit and didn't even know what he was doing when he started it. Just here's a need. Here's something I want to do. This is making a difference. This feels right as my purpose. And It just keeps snowballing and developing. And when we follow our purpose and our passion, this is a prime example of what can happen when we do that and when we keep putting good out into the world and helping others and lifting voices because everybody's voice matters. I'm I will I will die on that hill for sure because I know it to be true. Um, All right. So super stoked that you're here, by the way. Little business up top. Also, if you can like subscribe. If you could write a review on Apple Podcasts, I would be so grateful. Thank you so much. We're working to build those up to keep bringing you more and more awesome guests and more and more awesome content. Um, But a a review anywhere is helpful as well. If you're listening on Spotify, wherever it is. Thank you. Um, Also join the newsletter if you haven't yet. I do three things that I've learned to start your week focused and shining brighter every single Monday into your inbox. And then every Thursday, we profile our interview and what's going on in that and what you'll learn. So stoked that you're here. Speaking of interviews, let's get to today's interview. It's Jai Alatas. As I said, he is one of the co-founders of the Creative Futures Collective. And I discovered the Creative Futures Collective as I am a mentor through a program that they're putting on in partnership with Soho House. And I have been really elated to meet the people that I've met through that, to meet my mentee, E.B., who is actually sitting in here in the studio today and looking gorgeous as usual. And she's just an incredible person. And I, my heart just kind of bursts as I think about this. And And to see what Soho House is doing to lift the voices of people who might be experiencing disenfranchisement in their own lives. And because of the systemic processes we have in this country, and he is working to change that. Creative Futures Collective believes that someone's current circumstances do not, should not dictate their future. And so um, they are What they say they're doing is unearthing the next generation of creative industry leaders from disenfranchised communities through workshops, connections, paid futureships, which he's going to talk about today, and to break cycles of systemic inequalities. So anyway, they became an official organization in 2020, and Jai co-founded this with Yanni Bridges and Marky Bryant, and I'm so excited to share this. He started a record label when he was 16, just kind of like with a friend to do it, which blows my mind because not only did he just start a record label, which doesn't sound like that big a deal. No, like eight years later, he sold it to EMI. (laughs) I mean, that's badass. And so anyway, they're now starting a record label under Creative Futures, which he's going to tell us about too. So I also ask him about his daily processes, what he does to stay connected to his purpose. And so I will let the interview speak for itself now. So let's get to it. Remember that you can find them at creativefuturescollective.com or on their Instagram, which is Creative Futures Collective. And we will have those links in the show notes as well. So you can click there, follow them and learn more and maybe share it with someone who would be interested in helping out in any way or being a part of it. So let's get to it today with Jai Alatas of Creative Futures Collective. I'll add a little something to just slow us down because I like to be intentional and slow down in the moment. And I know you just 
just got off an airplane and came straight here. So thank you. Of course. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you could make time to do it. Because yeah. um, where are you based? L.A. I'm in L.A. I yeah. thought so. Um, yeah. So do you want to cleanse your space a tiny bit with that? Sure. You know. And my intention is just I love what you're doing in the world, and I was so. It's Palo Santo, yeah. And so I was just moved by it, and just want to keep raising your voice and what you're doing in the world because I just think, um, well, it's not even a matter of opinion. It's really moving and lovely and, and important. So I wanted to know more about your story and how you even came to doing this and created creative futures. Yeah. Yeah. So what initially gave you this? Cause I know you co-founded it. Um, and so what was the initial like impetus? There wasn't a moment, like there wasn't, there wasn't an idea that we had that we wanted to create this. It kind of evolved from a lot of things. And I don't know how far back you want to go. I want to go as far back as you want to go. I don't care. Well, I, I, I if think there's something important, then, you I, know. I, I think a lot of it just has to do with my life as well. Yeah. And how that kind of shaped, you know, kind of leading to this point. Um, so to give some context, um, you know, Creative Futures Collective, which is my company, um, Essentially, you know, we're, we're, we're calling ourselves what well, we are, an opportunity ecosystem for talent that's traditionally been overlooked, ignored, or forgotten. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what we're really excited in, like the, the unheard voices and kind of what they can bring to the world. Um, and I think I was like one of those people, you know, gr- growing up. Like my, I'm from Australia. Uh, my dad's an Indonesian immigrant. He didn't go past eighth grade in school. Uh, so... You know, he was a cleaner his whole life. He's still alive, but like working life. Um, so we grew up and, and my mum, who's a white Australian woman, she kind of uh, pretty much spent her whole working life uh, working in Indigenous rights in Australia. So we kind of grew up, um, you know, just kind of in a household where people cared about things and you weren't allowed to kind of be ignorant. Um, but then also growing up in largely white Australian suburbia, where you're only the only brown kid and the only different kid and the kid who, you know, the food smells different when friends go over and all that sort of stuff. So I, I think there was, there was a part of always feeling like different and an outcast for me personally. And then when I was 16, I ended up starting a record label uh, in high school called Below Par Records, which was Why like- Why did you start a record label? That's also a good question. I still don't really know the answer to because- <laughs> Did you play music? No. And I think that's why I probably started it because I was like, I wanted to, but I wasn't talented enough. <laughs> so I, could, I couldn't be in a band. So I had to start a, start a label instead. That's how I was going to get involved. But again, that wasn't something that I had planned to do for a long period of time because I didn't even know what a record label was probably until like a day before I started one. But started this label with like $500 that my mum and dad had put away for me to buy a car with um, that I could get access to when I was 16. They didn't know, but I, I kind of took the money and, and put it in to this, uh, to this label with uh, one of my other friends, Mark, and we had $1,000 and we started this label called Below Par and printed like 500 CDs and would sell them at school and at parties and all this sort of stuff. And without going into too much detail into that, uh, which, I can, which I can later, but um, ended up doing pretty well in that, in that. And I ended up, we ended up selling the record label to EMI when I was 24. So no, cap, no outside capital, um, no family connections or anything. Just so, the five hundred dollars. Just the five hundred dollars, and um, yeah, just kind of work work hard and and figured it out. But the reason why I tell this story is because when I was in high, because I started in high school, um, my mum was my mum is like university educated. My dad isn't, and my mum was like, you know, you've got to go to university, or you've got to go to college, and I got so obsessed with my label, I didn't care about that anymore, and. The grades that I needed to get into the course I wanted to do, which I thought was going to teach me how to run a record label, I couldn't. I didn't get them, so I couldn't go. I couldn't go to school and learn how to run That's a record like label. That's like the perfect irony of college, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Like I ran a business for a few years, for five years, and I was like, I got an MBA. I know I got an MBA. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's what you do. So, yeah. So I didn't go to university. I didn't go to college. I, I ran this label, and then I figured out that like that was the best thing I could have done because I didn't go and waste four years learning stuff that wasn't going to be that relevant to what right. I was doing anyway. Um, so, so with all that being said, that was kind of like my, my background. Um, when I came to the United States, I was working with a couple of nonprofits out in LA, 
um, and a couple of people, like former foster youth that were experiencing like housing insecurity kind of because they aged out of the foster care system, told me that they wanted to get into the music industry. And Why did you come to the US? <laughs> so... I know I should probably tell that part because it, I'm just I, curious. Well, it does, it's for, for work, for business. So, oh, okay. So I, I had a company that turned into Creative Futures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I had a company called Locals, essentially super high level. It was like Airbnb experiences before Airbnb experiences existed, um, but aimed at corporates. So like companies like Uber, Salesforce, PayPal, they were clients of ours. They could like go surfing with a pro surfer for the day or like cook with this head chef for their, for their teams or clients. Got it. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that. And through that, we started like kind of walking, um, working with like different nonprofits mm -hmm. um, to offer that experience to people from like disenfranchised communities that wouldn't normally get that opportunity. So like a, a, an example is we did this like skateboard photography workshop with uh, a super famous like probably the most famous skateboard photographer in the world, Atiba Jefferson, uh, and we did a, Uber was a client, and we had like fifteen Uber executives there learning to shoot skate photos. We had a pro skater come down, and then we had some of the former Foster Youth from Safe Place for Youth come and be part of the experience. So that's what we we're kind of doing: we're like getting the company to pay for the experience, and then we were getting like reaching out to different nonprofits to have people kind of you know participate. And the, and the companies were like, yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, sweet, this is this makes us look good. And you know, mm -hmm. but that was that was kind of the problem for me. And that was that was, you know, when I thought about where the value was going, it was really going to the companies because their employees were like, you know, engaged and patting themselves on the back, but then they go back to their privileged lifestyles. Um, and you know, the youth or whoever we're working with have this great experience, but you know, they they go home and they wake up the next day and I mean if they have a home, right? And they they're yeah. still homeless and, and don't have jobs um or whatever it is. So that to me was just kind of like, you know, there's, there's got to be something here that we can do better. And with my background in the, the music industry and kind of entertainment industry, I was like, we should find like employment opportunities for people. And that was kind of, that was kind of like the genesis of it. So it kind of evolved, but it was never, Creative Futures was never an idea. Yeah. And, but you went straight to employment for people. You were like, these people are talented, so let's find. Yeah. But, but I, I think we did a few steps first, which was we kind of, you know, built a curriculum. And again, this is someone that didn't go to <laughs> didn't go to school past high school or even paying attention in high school, you know. So I'm designing a curriculum. Isn't that kind of better because you weren't like limited by absolutely the ways yeah. of here's how you do it? Yeah, because I just thought of like what's what's valuable. Like what have I found valuable in my life to get to where I am? And and really, like in, if you're looking at college, like, and I can I can dive into this. Uh, later and some of the like the talent that we're seeing now as we've, as we've scaled but like the value of college isn't the education that you get it's the network that you get plugged into and like most companies when they hire they'd like to hire from oh stanford and this and yale and blah blah, blah wherever they, they hire from they like the name and knowing that you have access it's to the alumni network they don't care what you did it's fucking brand. you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you basically created that so yeah, we call it an alumni like, network for people that don't have alumni network. So create a curriculum around things that we thought were important, which was like, you know, communication, accountability, uh, how to build a network, building mm -hmm. relate, like looking at relationships as long-term relationships and how valuable they are as assets through your whole life. Um, you know, financial literacy, storytelling, like leading into our story, just stuff that like if you can kind of nail these things, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. But not just that. Then, okay, well, what else do people need? Well, People need networks. So people don't have any networks. So what can we do? We tapped all our friends and people we knew from, you know, every company, Apple, Google, Vice, Netflix, Spotify, CAA to-, to Yeah, be, your list is crazy. To be mentors um, and everyone, <laughs> you know, just people that were like, yeah, would love to be part of this. So, you know, build, build a mentor network that, again, people are going into six figures worth of debt to kind of plug into. We made one for free. Um, and then the other thing that we we're coming up against was like the internships. Uh, because when we were trying to get internships for for fellows and, and people working with during the locals days, even before Creative Futures, we were rejected by everyone because you had to be in college to access to do an internship, which again, with my background, not having gone to university, not having gone to college, starting a record label at 16 and selling it, like you don't need any sort of college or university education to work in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Like there's not one job, maybe like business affairs you know, legal. And that's a maybe. Yeah. You can still learn that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, legal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, but otherwise, no, 
you just mm-hmm. don't like you don't need college degree to do AI, you don't need a college degree to do marketing, you don't need a college degree mm-hmm. to do radio promo, like you know. <laughs> no. you know. So um so yeah, that that was kind of like annoying and I had a chip in my shoulder about that. So we created what we call a future ship, which is essentially the same thing, guaranteed paid work experience. But we got around, we went around all the HR departments because they were like our biggest blocker. Um, really? Yeah, because they're just like they're the most risk averse people in they the world. They want to like have all the paperwork filled out. Is that it? Well, they don't want to let them in because like it's a system that says, no, you have to go to college and you, you can't, you're not reasoning with HR people. They're there to just make sure that everything kind of runs as smoothly. But they want change, right? Mm-hmm. Like change has to come from the top. And so the men, the people that you were working with, the network people, they were just the ones kind of it. opened, opened the, opened the doors for us, opened side doors, um, and we got people in. And you know, in that first kind of batch that we did, we had people at the Lakers and, and Spotify and the World Surf League, again, all kind of backdoored. Um, but the, the whole point was, well, once people come through this program, you've got, you know, you've got a, you've got a mentor from Google and a mentor from Netflix, and you've just gone and done some work with the Lakers. That's going to look pretty good on your resume in twelve weeks. You know, yeah. Again, by and for free, we're not mm-hmm. we don't charge anyone. Um, so that was kind of the idea. We 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 pad people with the kind of the, the skills, the support, the network, and the experience, and we kind of see what comes out the other side of that. Because for us, it's always the outcome has always been, well, you know, what is the outcome? Is it is it a job? Is it someone starts a business? Is it someone becomes like you know a content creator? Whatever it is, that's what we're really interested in. The program just helps us get there. Okay, you made it sound pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I mean, you're like, yeah, we just talked to these people from Google and Spotify and all that. I mean, you made it sound easy, but what setbacks did you have along the way? Uh, where, where, what were the challenges and where where did you feel like giving up and where did you push through? Yeah, um, I think everything and still is a challenge, but more so when we started. I mean, we weren't funded at all. So we we self-funded it and we didn't, my, my co-founder, Marky and I, we didn't really have much money. But basically, when we started, you know, some of the some of the hurdles we had with our fellows because we we started with like ten fellows in LA, mm-hmm. and this was like pre pandemic, um, two thousand nineteen. So, partnered with WeWork, they gave us like a space to host these like weekly workshops. We bring in kind of different experts to, to run the workshops. Oh, but, nice! But we found that like, you know, because we were the population was working with we had people that were formerly incarcerated, we had people dealing with housing insecurity, we had like low income single mothers. Um, living in like shelters and, and stuff. So uh, no one had computers. So we had to go out and, and, and buy computers for everybody. And oh, shit, yeah. um, I remember I bought 10 computer, 10 laptops from Best Buy and I had to make a decision if I was going to buy those laptops or pay my rent on time. And I chose to buy the laptops, um, which, you know, it was fine. And it was a good investment. <laughs> yeah. What um, happened with your rent? I guess you got nah, I just got a slap on the wrist and yeah. Yeah, got, it, got it paid eventually. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, it was just one of those things where I was like, if we're really going to do this, we've really got to do it mm-hmm. and, and we've got to go in. And, you know, the other thing that we noticed as we were doing these, doing these workshops early on was um, a lot of the, the pa- people that were parents, like the single mothers, they didn't have childcare or right. couldn't afford childcare. So that'd bring their kids. So all of a sudden, like, the, you know, the 10 fellows would have been in workshops would turn into like almost like a daycare. Like we'd have just kids running around everywhere, people everywhere. So we had to feed them. Because we, we we were doing this like after work, like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. So, you know, every every Tuesday night when we do them, we'd go out, we'd go and buy food for, you know, a bunch of people and everyone would come and, and, and eat dinner. The kids, is obviously the kids mm-hmm. as well. Um, and then after that, because we were doing this in Culver City in L.A. and none of the people like lived in Culver City. So when they were, were coming, they were like, you know, bringing their babies across town on like, you know, multiple buses or trains or whatever because uh, they didn't have their own transportation. Right. And by the time we'd finish these workshops, it'd be like 9 p.m. at night and too dangerous, we thought, to to kind of, you know, go off like that. Yeah, send some single mom out with her kid. Um, kids, yeah. yeah. So Mark and I would basically stand outside ordering Ubers and Lyfts um, for everybody, you know, mm-hmm. like just, just on rotation to make sure everyone got home. And, and this was like, and we would go, like, you know, Uber was a client of mine. Um, and we were like, can you just give us some rides? So we can give it to these like people that actually need it because they're like, you know, working on better in their lives. No, 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 we can't do that because you're not a charity. You're not a nonprofit. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything. We just started doing it. Um, so yeah. And then like the computers, no one gave us computers, food. We can get free food from anyone. So we we're just forking out, you know, <laughs> and it wasn't like we had money. That was the thing. It wasn't like, it wasn't this 
philanthropic thing. It was just like we we know that this is an investment that we need to make. Mm-hmm. Um, so that part was like pretty tough. I was just like I was just scraping by. Did you track every single expense and keep it for this company, or did it come out of your own pocket? Po- out of out of our own pockets. We didn't even have a company at the time as well. You were just doing it. We we're just doing it. Wow. So that part was that part was difficult, but knew that we were building something special. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then the the job part, like the intern, the future ships, like not every single company rejected us pretty much for for official internships. Um, even when I mentioned the the Spotify's and the Lakers of the world, World Surf Leagues, like they didn't pay the people, we paid them. We paid them twenty dollars an hour. We have what our future ship is like. Oh, the future ship is paid by y'all. Oh, and not wow. anymore. Right. It was. It was. It was when we started because they were like, well, we can get someone in to shadow, but like I can't again because we're going around the departments, we're going around HR. So it's like, you know, how do they tap in? So it's not like we're 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 grateful. Yeah, we're grateful for those doors being open for us. But we were the ones paying them, and again, we weren't funded. We were. This was all coming out, <laughs> out of our own pockets. Wow. Um. So yeah. So that was that was kind of hard, and and just trying to convince, honestly, just companies that this was was a worthwhile endeavor. And you know, I think pre June twenty twenty, we would go around to companies, tell them what we're doing, tell them why it's important, um, because we would never go around saying like this is the right thing to do. You know, you should do this because it's giving back. We're like, no, we have incredibly talented people that have a lived experience that most people in your companies don't have. And they they bring these insights and these thoughts and these perspectives that are gonna make your company better. Right. It's not about it's not about charity here. This is about like empowering people to like change change your business and mm-hmm. change and change their lives at the and same time. And when you speak into a company, you gotta to speak to like their you're gonna make you better, but their so self interest. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um but you know, they're just like, oh yeah, this is cool, but you know, kind of now's not the time. Now's not the time. Um, you know, and then I guess the pandemic hit, and then you know, the the, the social justice stuff hit, and then you know, mm. it, it became the time. And all the sudden stuff that we were working on for years before became the number one priority in in corporate America. Wow, and that kind of changed everything for us. In That's so rare. I know. It to have like a huge catalyst. Yeah, full zeitgeist stuff. Like, cause yeah. even the pandemic played a, played a big part in it. Still does. Um, just yeah. Well, people got more compassionate. I think, right? Like, is that part of it? <sighs> um, I think yeah. I think that I think that plays a part. Of it. I think the the COVID and the catalyst for us was we always knew that what we were doing had to be more than like ten people sitting in a room, and we always knew that we wanted like. We wanted to take it remote, like the program, mm-hmm. because then we could. Because you know, even though we're in like we're we're working with people in LA and from disenfranchised or system impacted communities, there they're still in LA. Not to say their life is any easier, but they have closer access to specifically the creative industries, which is you know what we focus on. We're getting people jobs in the creative industries: so yes. like music, film, TV, sports, media, fashion, etc. So you're in LA, like you're not that far. But if you're in, you know, you're living on a reservation. Albuquerque or you know New, New Mexico, um, how are you going to get access to to those companies um, and the mentors and all of that sort of stuff? So, what the beauty of the pandemic did was, before that we knew we wanted to take it remote. We kept getting told by people, oh, you know, it's not going to have that same magic of having the people in the room, which is true to an extent, mm-hmm. but it does democratize the access, and that's what we were always interested in. The pandemic. All of a sudden, people that like never wanted to do video calls or wanted to do anything remotely just were forced to do that. And we're like, actually, this isn't that bad and this is pretty easy. And quite a few people actually kind of liked it. So that enabled us to be able to open up our program nationwide and have people that, you know, like I, like I, I, I said, living on a reservation. We had one of our fellows, Naomi Glasses, who wanted to get into fashion. Um, she did her future ship with Gabriella Hurst in New York. And was able to do it from from you know her house um, on on the res. If she was having to go to New York, she wouldn't be able to afford it. So like you think of all these like entry level and internship opportunities, they usually go to rich people because their parents subsidize the cost of them living in those cities. So pandemic like enabled us to scale by using technology to to do the curriculum and the mentor and stuff and all that, but also being able to do the future ships from anywhere. Um, you know, we've got people all over the country now that have incredible experience at incredible companies that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
I never even so, thought of that, but yeah. Yeah. So that combined with, you know, companies finally realizing the, the racial inequality and inequities that exist in the current system and trying mm-hmm. to kind of like change that. We were, we were just, you know, we were there. We didn't start because of it, but we were, we were there. Is your mom still working in this field, like with indigenous people? And My mom still is working in, I don't think, she's not working on the like purely the indigenous rights stuff mm-hmm. anymore, but she works in social impact in Australia. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's all she's ever done in her whole life. She must be very proud of what you're doing. She is. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded she is. a little, I'm not so sure, but yeah, no, she's she got to be. Right? She is. We just have different, um, we, we look at it different ways. In what way? So my sister's very similar to her as well. They, they think that, and this is going to make me sound kind of, like a capitalist, but it's it's not so much. It's okay that. to be a capitalist. No, I know I am one, but <laughs> but but basically, um, and I, I think it's different. But basically, like thinking that problems can be solved just by government, and oh, I I see what you're saying. Yeah, rather and, than private enterprise. Uh, yeah, and out. and and for the most part, I think the private enterprise thing is. Like people say, no, this is how to solve problems. Like not like like tech probably. I'm not I'm not for that at all. They're all full of shit. Like all those companies, we're changing the world. No, you're not. Like that you, that's not. But there are solutions out there that don't need to be, um, you know, a, a charitable vehicle or like right. even, even us. Like we purposely didn't start a nonprofit until we were forced to. Like we were forced to because we were just leaving money on the table. Yeah. But we were like, I don't understand what is why this needs to be a charity. Like. If we're going out there and we're going into communities that you don't have access to, we're identifying talent, we're training talent, we're connecting them with all these opportunities, then we're bringing them to you so you can hire them. We've essentially done work for you. That's a service. You should pay us a fee for that. Hmm. Right? But then they're like, yeah, but it should be charitable. Why should it be charitable? Like if you use a recruiter and you're hiring for a, you know. Right, that's helping people. Yeah, <laughs> that's not, yeah. Right, do you, are they a charity? Do they're they not do a charity. 501c3? If you, you know, your plumbing breaks. <laughs> Do that, does the plumber need to be like so it's it's an American thing, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, but yeah, so there's you know, I think there's a there's a I don't and we all know why that exists because of rich people and, and tax breaks and companies not paying tax and all this sort of stuff. They they love to use those vehicles, right? They exist. Yeah. So mm-hmm. why not? Right. But um, so I think that's where that's where we don't completely align, where mom would be like, Well, no, this whole thing should be funded through through grants and, and government. And not saying the government does the work, they fund the work, which I'm all for as well. But there is another side to it where it's like, yeah, you can create social enterprises around this as well. That's super interesting. Yeah. Have you always been super driven? Like, or what are you like as a person? Like, are you, uh, do you, you sound like such a, you know, business starter, very driven, yeah. entrepreneurial spirit. How would you describe yourself? Um, Never been asked that question before. How would I describe myself? Um, it's hard. I don't even consider <laughs> I don't even consider myself an entrepreneur, even though I am obviously because I've started businesses. I mean, you started at sixteen. I know, but it, and again, that wasn't me wanting to be an entrepreneur. Like I always like you know how easy <laughs> life yeah. would be if I just like was content to just like have a job <laughs> and like do the normal thing. It's like when you can't not do something. You're I like, just have to do it. Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. it's a, I've had a couple of jobs in my life, and it's been really frustrating. You know? What were they? Um, like does like corporate type stuff? No, I had a, I had a. Um, well, my first job, my first official job was like I worked at Domino's. I was a delivery driver. Okay. Um, but I always did stuff before that. I was like a, I did paper run, you know, as a kid. I washed people's cars. Like always, mm-hmm. kind of just trying to make make a dollar <laughs> to buy basketball cards or whatever it is I was trying to do. Um, but yeah. I never, I never really had a job, but I did have an agency when I, after I sold my label, I, I came to, um, I moved to America for a little while and then I came back to Australia, an agency. And that was kind of like having a job because you've got like clients, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I was working with one client that had like the GoPro account in Australia. Um, and I worked for them and that was super fun. It was only like six months, but just still things that I would see that I'd be like, I can't, you know, I was just, I just felt so restricted. Instead of just seeing like an opportunity or something I want really wanted to do, 
um, and being able to go after it, you know. So you've kind of got to be content to not, yeah, just to not, almost Call not to have shots. that. Yeah, and, and not, not have that drive and, and kind of just how my brain is wired to want to solve problems. Yeah. You know, you've got to be happy to take a step back. I wasn't happy to take that step back. So this is, this so is, so this is where you are. Slow to, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a good answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it fits, you know, I can see that about mm. you. Um, what I'm curious, like, you know, this show is about transformation and whether it's on a grand scale or on a personal scale. And how has this transformed you? Like, what have you seen growth wise yourself? I think that this is always where I was meant to be and always what I was meant to be doing. Like I was saying to someone the other day, I don't see myself starting businesses after this. What I've always wanted to do, and even from a young age, because like I was so young when I started my record label and I kind of inspired like a bunch of like other young kids and honestly other like brown kids because we were in the punk rock scene. There wasn't many brown kids or black kids or, you know, anyone except white kids really in the punk rock scene in Australia. Um, and after I started the label, people were like, well, if he can do it, you know. Well, it's punk rock to start that. As a, you <laughs> we, know, as we, a we, we, we can do it too. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then seeing these people go on and, and be quite, not quite, very successful with their own labels and, and companies and stuff um, and always wanting to be like, that's, that's where I want to go. I want to be someone that can like use my experience and knowledge to mentor um, that next generation and, you know, with, with capital invest in them as well, not just like give them advice, but, but invest in, and be part of their journeys but just kind of sit back and plug in because I have the network and, you know, all, all the stuff that, I mean, we're doing with, with Soho as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's always been something that I've wanted to do, but I wanted to get, get to that place before I felt like super comfortable. And again, Creative Futures wasn't an idea, but now that, you know, we've, we've, we've built this, you know, we've got about, we've got a, a net, we've got 300 fellows now that have gone through uh, one of our programs and, it's really interesting seeing that, you know, originally this was started for people to get jobs, but now we're seeing people come through that aren't even looking for nine to five jobs. We have, we have artists and filmmakers and designers and musicians and entrepreneurs. Sitting and, right here. Yeah. Where is she? <laughs> there she is. Yeah. Going right and, here. Um, and just seeing like this, the breadth of talent that we've had that, yeah, that we've got access to and just being like, this is what I want to do. I want to invest in these people and, and support them however we can. So that's kind of like, that's kind of how, what, what I see in my future mm -hmm. is, yeah, is just making this a vehicle for, you know, younger up and coming or not, maybe not even younger, but just people that like myself yeah. have these ideas that haven't had access or support, you know, in the traditional ways that, that wealthy affluent people have. And again, the chip my shoulder from the way that I grew up and my background and not having that, yeah. um, it's really important to me to be like, to just have it for those people as well. So yeah, I just kind of think, I think all the experiences I've had, I love entertainment, you know, music, sports, like all that stuff. So yeah, the industries I've chosen to work with, you know, like yeah. doing like just super cool, fun stuff. Um, but you, you know, you are impacting people um, and, and their lives and not just them, but their community, their families and, and seeing, you know, like I'll tell you uh, a, a story. I've, I've got a lot of them, but you know, one, one story that we had in that, in our first, um, in our first cohort, uh, this woman called Francine, she was, she was living in a homeless shelter, um, at the time with, I think at the time her daughter was 11 years old. She came into our program. Um, the only work experience she'd ever had before that was as, as a sex worker. And we put her at the World Surf League as, uh, for her future ship. And she kind of like, you know, walked in the first day and looked around and, and she noticed that, uh, you know, not only was she the only black woman in the building, she was the only black person there and brought it up to the CEO of the company on her first day of her future ship. And, you know, just basically said like, this is super cool what's going on here, but I, I had no idea about this. And like people in my community, we don't know about this, but if we knew about it, like there's potentially like a really big audience on the other side here. And, and the CEO at the time was like, no, you're completely right. And basically at the end of the four weeks, they offered her a full-time job. Um, and I was, I was in the meeting when she got off of the job because she put the, did this presentation had like the C-suite in the room and they offered her a job and my leg just started like shaking. I started <laughs> shaking. I was like, oh God, we did it. You know what I mean? Cause that was like mm -hmm. our first, our first cohort when we were just wow. kind of putting it all in and 
again, we knew that we were doing we were doing something that was special, but to 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 be there and to see it. And then just to see what, like, you know, how that impacted her life and her daughter and, you know, getting a place and getting a car and, you know, having her come and speak to future fellows and just all of that sort of stuff. You, you start to see that it just, it's, it's more than just impacting one person. Um, and also seeing how it impacted the company, you know, and the, and the organization yeah, as well. It evolved so. them into a direction that they needed to evolve in. Absolutely. So just, just having those moments as well is also something that always like, because you get, you know, you get so, Dug, uh, dug in the weeds at time and stuck in the weeds because you're running a business and you're doing yeah. this and that, do that, and then you know you you have one on one time with a fellow or, or or a mentee or whatever it is, and they tell you what they're doing, or you see them go from here to here, and then you just go, oh, yeah, that's right, that's why I do this. <laughs> it reconnects you to your purpose. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are your daily practices like? Do you have things that you do every day to like stay connected to that purpose or to stay in the right headspace? I try to. Like what? Um, so, I well, I'm not that I do this every day, but I've, I've started doing two things that have been really impactful and helpful to me, which is one is therapy. Oh, Never did that ever before. Um, and I got an executive coach as well. Oh, wow. And it probably took me about six months to do both to kind of start realizing the value. You know, I wasn't sure mm-hmm. what I was doing at first. It was like, um, and then daily practices kind of like, I have a dog, so you know, every morning, um, take him for take him for a walk. And just be doing deep breaths while I'm outside. Work out most days. Mm-hmm. I have my green tea ritual in the morning before I start. What's your green tea ritual? I just make a green tea and I sit it's, there and, yeah. and <laughs> you know, sit there and you drink it. I, I do sit you there and, yeah, and I just make sure, like you know, I don't check my emails before eight a.m. and I don't know. Oh, that's good. Just no, a, that's important. Yeah, just a couple of things like that. Um, to start the day right yeah i like i love pen and paper mm-hmm. so like on a sunday i'll write my um I'll, I'll journal on sunday nights and do kind of like a weekly intentions then i'll do like what i want to achieve for the week separately my to-do book and then the what i want to achieve that week i kind of you know break down into the daily to-dos so that's all like pen and paper how long have you been doing that mm, probably years years yeah okay that's important yeah yeah that's good that's really good yeah i do the same thing i try to sit on sundays i don't always get to it but um yeah yeah i i hate doing anything on a sunday that involves like like going out you know like i i love uh, sundays are like my sacred day mm-hmm. i like to cook a home cook meal and like just you know just make sure that i'm going into early night um and going into monday and set yourself up for I have to. Feeling good in the week. Yeah, because otherwise I just feel like I'm behind because there's so many moving parts to what we're doing now and I'm just, I hate it. So Sunday's yeah. Sunday's super important to just, yeah, just, just relax. Yeah, and, like how much are you traveling this week? Uh, this week's, yeah, this week's insane. Like I just flew in from LA to Austin. I fly out tomorrow at lunchtime and then I fly to Australia on Saturday. Wow. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then when I go back from Australia, I'm... I'm home for three days and I go to New York and I come back and then I'm home for a few days and then I go to Miami. Yeah. And then, yeah. Cause y'all are starting in Miami. Yeah. I'm doing Miami. I just and got back from Miami and yeah. Uh, I'm excited for that there. Sounds awesome. I've never been to Miami, so I'm excited. excited ah, cool. To go. Yeah. Yeah. It's got its own personality, yeah. which I, I like short bursts. I think it's great. <laughs> Imagine living there is probably a different experience, but you know. Yeah. Uh, and the Soho house is really beautiful there. Um, I, Join. Let's talk for a minute about Soho House yeah. because that's how I found you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I had a preconceived notion of Soho House, you know, over the years, and it seemed, you know, like for an exclusive bunch of people. And so when it was coming to Austin, I was like, I guess I'll apply, you know. And I had mixed feelings about it because I felt like it was like leaving people out. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was, I went ahead and applied. I did it. I did it with no makeup on. I was at work one day and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to look like this. And I just took my picture and I was like, they don't like me like this. And I'm just, I'm just going to fill it out right here, right now. Boom. Done. And see if I get in. And, and I did. And then as I did, I came to understand more about it and that they were trying to make it accessible to more people, but it's still expensive mm-hmm. and it's still not. And so, you know, I just felt a little torn about that. Like, is that, is that 
the right thing to do, you know, to put forth in the world or whatever. So um, when this mentorship came in my email, I thought, well, this sounds interesting. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what I was applying for or anything. And I went ahead and did it. And then, you know, got accepted as a mentor and then heard you speak and heard what Soho House is doing for the mentees. And it's so incredible. They're giving them, they're gifting three-year memberships. And I was just really impressed. And I feel like, you know, how'd you even hook up with them? And are you impressed with the way that they've like done this? Has it surprised you at all? Um, I, I don't, I don't know if it surprised me. I wasn't, I wasn't a member pre us doing the program. Mm -hmm. We got our memberships because we, we, we run the program. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've obviously been there a lot and have, you know, in, enjoyed the spaces. They're beautiful spaces. Beautiful spaces. I, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm speaking yeah. ill of them at all. I didn't have an understanding and now I feel like I have a better understanding and, and yeah. like what they're, what they're doing and putting out there. I think it's, I think it's important, but I will say this, I will say that the program, so we started with them and I'll, I'll say how, I'll tell you how we got connected and stuff, but we started with them in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, they actually launched the mentorship program out of the UK in 2018. And I think that's really important because again, similar to us, they were doing it before it was, you know, the quote unquote cool thing to do. So right? it wasn't y'all, they were doing it first. They were doing, and then well, they, they would, yes, so they, 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 they launched, you? yeah, they, they partnered with I like see. a local organization in each territory. So we're the, oh. North, we're the North American partner. I see. So they, so, uh, you know, a woman called, called Min Shrimpton out of the UK actually like launched, launched the program. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much support she had when she first launched it, but like, you know, the, the thinking and it's very similar thinking to us. And I think that's why we really enjoy our partnership is Soho House was created, um, as you know, like you said, like a, a private club, but for the creative industries. So mm -hmm. for creatives, right? But, you know, and I was like 20 something years ago when I was started in, in London. But if you look at kind of like when you walk into a so house and you look around, like everyone kind of looks the same, right? It's like affluent white people for the most part. Um, but if you think of like that next generation of creatives, they're not going to look like that. Like if you think of where the demographic of this country is going, like right now, people that are considered minorities, black and brown people, um, they become the majority in 2032. So 10 years from now, become the majority. So the next generation of artists, storytellers, entrepreneurs, creatives, whatever, they're going to be from these communities. Mm -hmm. But the way that the system is currently designed and the way that like, you know, a majority are, are currently placed, they, they don't have access to a place like Soho House because the memberships, you know, are, yeah, it's, it's, there's a barrier there. Yeah. But if Soho House wants to stay relevant, as a, as a place with that next generation of storytellers and creatives and, and entrepreneurs and stuff, this is the community where they're going to come from, mm -hmm. but they need to get access to that. So that, that, that was basically the whole idea. It's like, we need to bring in fresh voices because this is the, this, this is the voice of the future. It's not even like, again, doing it because it's the right thing to do. It's like, these are the voices that we want to have around the house. We need these people around the house for us to stay fresh and relevant and, you know, like even create a pipeline for themselves about people who are going to work there in memberships and, and content and all that sort of stuff. So I think that that's a big reason. And that's why, you know, like the difference between their program and our program is like their, their program is also focused on the mentors, right? Mm -hmm. As in, yes, we're giving these opportunities to these young creatives, these young mentees, they get to come in, they get mentored by like world-class mentor in the, you know, the vertical of what they're looking to break into. They get free memberships. Um, but for the mentors, it's also like, and now you can be part of something that's like bigger than just, you know, coming to the club and hanging out. Oh, big time. Yeah. Well, for me, I was just so excited because I didn't understand, you know, there were a lot of applicants and things like that. And I was like, felt really lucky to, to be doing this yeah. and to be connecting with people and just broadening my scope a lot. And, um, and it's pushing me in a way that I didn't really expect because, you know, I, on this show and stuff, I'm always talking about like being present and worthiness and all this kind of stuff. And so, and overcoming our own mental s things holding us back. Yeah. And so, you know, I've just noticed in myself, I'm like, oh, I have my own like little mental issues around this. Like, am I, am I good enough to, to mentor someone? And I'm like, you know, 
I'm almost 50 years old. Yes. I, the answer is yes. I have enough experience, but you know, we can just, um, I don't know, tell ourselves bullshit stories in our heads that we're not. And so this has been really good for me just in my own growth, Yeah, just to understand that, yeah, I have something to offer even when we feel like we don't. Yeah. And everybody has something to offer. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's one thing that we've kind of learned with, with mentors as well, thinking like, you know, these people are so they're buttoned up, they're professional, they're doing this and that. And then them, the mentor is having a similar kind of imposter syndrome. Oh, I already to, talked to somebody <laughs> else and she was, we were chatting and she was like, I'm, uh, you know, having some angst about this or whatever. And I was like, what? Through yeah. my eyes, you know, you have like tons to offer. Yeah. But I actually am just so impressed with everyone that's, is a mentee as well. And I'm like, I'm, I'm already learning from mine is sitting here, Evie. And, um, she, I'm already learning from her. The, yeah. uh, in fact, last time we met, I was like, now, why do you need a mentor again? <laughs> Cause she's so with it at 24 years old. I'm just yeah. surprised and impressed, not surprised, I guess, but just impressed. Well, I, think, I, I think that's what they worked out. I think that's what Soho's worked out as well. That like you've done correctly. The mentor actually probably gets more out of it than the mentee as in like you mm -hmm. take away more. Mm -hmm. Um, the mentee is obviously stoked with the like sweet, like so house membership and now part of this community. Yeah. And, and just and, it, uh, who you know. Yeah. Like, and I've heard that like my whole life. It's who you know, you know, and it's true. Yeah. yeah. In so many ways. I mean, my first job in radio in like 1994 here in Austin, I couldn't get a job and I certainly wasn't going to get a job on the air because I, didn't know what the hell I was doing. And my degree was not in that. And my mom knew somebody and mm. got my foot in the door. And that was it. You know? Yeah. And yep. I still sucked. And they still kept me around for a while <laughs> <laughs> until I learned something. Yeah. 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 So. So, yeah. So, yeah, that, that imposter syndrome, you know, it, it exists on both sides. Yeah. Um, but, the, yeah, the value, I, I really see, like, when people really get it, when they, when they plug into it, and they're like, it's always the mentors that walk away. Just be, oh my God. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. an incredible experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. I just got a sponsor in Al Anon. I don't know that you're supposed to talk about that. It's supposed to be anonymous. But anyway, uh, I did. And um, and she was just telling me that the other day because I felt bad calling her about something or asking her something. She was like, I this I get more out of this than you do. And Wait, I was like, Al Anon? It's like um the partner one, right? The part the companion. I did one of them. Yeah, you yeah. did? Yeah, I did one maybe. <laughs> one was all you needed. You're like, good. Uh. Um, yeah, it's been beneficial. My, uh, significant other was, uh, in recovery is in recovery, went to treatment recently. So yep. that's another story. Yep. Um, but anyway, she was just saying, I get as much out of, I get more out of this. And I was like, it's, that's kind of mind blowing, but it is true. If we open ourselves up to it, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So, well, thank you. Do you have yeah. anything? I know we're watching time and we're coming up on time. And I just wanted to offer the floor to you before we end. Is there anything we didn't get to? Anything you want to say before we go? Anything you want to make sure to say or reiterate or anything before we go? Um, <laughs> I just want to kind of, well, thank you first and foremost. Oh, thank you for um, being here, for rushing no, from the airport and doing this when I, you I blew into Austin. <laughs> This is fun, and I kind of like the sound of my voice in these in the cans. Dude, your voice is amazing, and your accent—it's <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm a voice nerd, though. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, in, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the sound of my own voice today. But um, I guess maybe just a, a call out to to anyone um, that's you know listening, watching um, that you know any anyone can get involved in what we do. So you know, we've kind of really grown in the last couple of years. Um, so we're looking for more people to be mentors. Like we always need more mentors and we don't really care where people are at in their careers because like you said, everyone has something to offer. That's so cool. Yeah. And like if somebody's thinking I'm too young or yeah, I'm no. too. Everyone has something. Everyone has something to offer. And it's really about building that kind of, that community and that ecosystem. Um, and, and we really are. We've got about 250 mentors now. We'll be at 500 by the end of the year. We've got 300 fellows. We'll be at 600 by the end of the year. And that is serious growth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been, it's been, it's been quite crazy. We just did a deal. I don't know if I can mention it. Probably can't. Um, okay. But yeah, just did a deal with like an, another really big company um, in fashion. 
that is going to be based around like indigenous creators um wow. and it's going to be like a product that gave that, me a little chill <laughs> a product that go that goes to market mm -hmm. um and they're going to work on this incredible pro project and just super super thrilled about that um we're launching a record label so i'm going back to my roots um nice. reason being when we were doing these showcases at soho it's all this incredible talent like people get up and, and they're, they're rapping they're singing they're performing it's like there's so much talent here but like they don't there's no launch pad and i would introduce them to people that i have in my network and in music industry and it was like yeah it's just it, they're talented but it's not there yet as far as getting ready to get like momentum so we're like well what if we started a label in partnership with like another label, like a bigger label mm -hmm. um we sign an artist that's just like a kind of single deal, one-off deal, but then all the stuff around all the extra assets are created by our fellows. So, for example, we sign an artist for a single that gets out, but the music video is done by one of our fellows. The photos is done by one of our fellows. The, uh, the A&R is done by a fellow. The label manager is a fellow. So we're giving all this experience to people that haven't traditionally had music industry experience. Now mm -hmm. they've got you know paid industry experience that they can put on their resumes and on their profiles and stuff. So helps kind of build that. So that's what we're kind of looking at doing is just how cool. can we kind of create this flywheel in this ecosystem where like everyone's working on each other's projects. They're all like, you know, bigging themselves up. Like in the last, you know, in the last three months, we've had people go get jobs at like Nike, uh, William Morris Endeavor, uh, Live Nation, Cobalt, like, and, you know, when, as they're going into the companies, they're like, how can we help? How can we bring people up? And, you know, these people are like entry level now, but they'll be executives in five years. That's and so they'll be badass. bringing up other people with them. So that's what, yeah. that's what really excites us is like how this thing grows and how kind of like the community supports each other and, and pre presents opportunities. So it's not like someone shouldn't be jealous if someone goes to get a job at Nike. It's like, no, this is going to benefit you. This benefits everybody. Um, it's exponential. Yeah. So that's, that's something that we're really excited about. So, we're, yeah, just looking for people to get involved as, as mentors, companies that want to take future ships on or, or hire people. We're, we're about to launch a product in a few weeks called Untalent, which is we've been doing manually. Like when I mentioned companies hiring those people, they've just been emailing saying, hey, we'll have to some talent that can do this and, you know, we'll send them profiles. Mm -hmm. But we're building an actual platform now. A company like Amazon, who's a partner of ours, can come on and say. And look at people. And well, they, they, it's more requests. So they say, oh. we're look, I'm looking for uh, cool. content creators. I'm looking for social media marketers. I'm looking for comms person. I'm looking whatever they have. Or, What's it called again? It's Untalent is the, Untalent. Name, the name of the platform we're cool. launching. Uh, but, yeah, and then we go – Thanks. Here are the five best candidates mm -hmm. for those roles, and then you know they can they can hire them, and off they go. So, That's so cool. Yeah, get really excited, and then I think like just the whole vision of what we're doing is like I was saying to you. Like I don't know if I'm going to start any other companies because I think this is it. I think this well, is. Well, you're my, starting like ten companies under your company. Under so. the company, <laughs> but, but having people like what I'm really interested in as well is we we're not there this year, but probably next year is um, launching like the venture arm mm -hmm. and and investing capital into entrepreneurs into businesses that come through that program someone nice else. yeah that's, that sounds like a logical move that sounds really yeah so people mm -hmm. can come through it's like okay what are you looking for are you looking for a job are you a creative that needs a platform whether it's i mean know, isn't that kind of what a record label is too sort of yeah yeah You're yeah, investing but, yeah yeah absolutely so yeah just building building that ecosystem out and kind of putting you know mm -hmm. fresh new talent out into the world and seeing where it goes mm-hmm Oh, that's awesome. Did it feel good to start a record label again? Does it feel good? It does. It feels funny because I always, I was like, no way I'm ever doing that again. Like I'm done. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've gone full circle. So yeah. Yeah, here I am. You know? That's so cool. Well, your story is yeah. really super interesting and I'm excited to be a part of this early on and watch it develop and do anything I can too. And that's a big reason why I wanted you on because your voice is really important and what you're doing is really important. and so cool thanks well i appreciate you i appreciate you inviting thanks. me on and appreciate you being a mentor and you know thanks using your time and skills and knowledge to you know impact not just your your mentee but but everyone and, and being part of the community as well it's really important thank you so, I, yeah. I appreciate that um because you know we can doubt ourselves and tell ourselves stories like i said so it's nice to hear so i receive that thank you <laughs> <laughs> and uh and anyway i'm just i'm really grateful and everyone can find you too at creativefutures.com right Great. Creative Futures Collective. Creative Futures Collective. Dot com. Yeah. And then, yeah, Instagram. Creative Futures Collective. Just Creative yes. Futures Collective is probably our most. Mm -hmm. Like if anyone is like looking that like on the other side, like is a mentee or a fellow that wants to get involved, like, you know, 
our Instagram is where we kind of post new programs popping up. We're, do, you know, we're doing seven programs for Soho House this year. So is that how most people find out yeah. about applying and stuff? Is that how you found out, Evie? I found out on Instagram. In yeah. Instagram? Yeah. yeah. Instagram, Instagram, um, and, and nonprofit partners. We have a bunch of nonprofit partners that like feed people through to us as oh, well. Oh, nice. But mm-hmm. Instagram has been, yeah, been great for. Well, good. Well, yeah. I want to just thank you so much for, for taking the time today. Of course, thank I know you. you're rushing out. And uh, anyway, I'm really awesome. grateful. And everybody can find you Creative Futures Collective. It'll be in the notes too. Awesome. Thank you, Jai. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Huge thanks today to Jai Alatas of Creative Futures Collective for joining us today. I know he was rushing from the airport straight to Soho House to work with mentors tonight, which I'm doing tonight. And anyway, huge thanks. I highly recommend Creative Futures Collective and checking it out. And I'm sitting here with Evie, yes. which I've been talking about you the whole episode, and you were sitting here. So I was like, come over of and course. chat. And uh, yeah, and you're a mentee in the program. And what did you think of, of Jai today? I thought it was just such a blessing, like hearing him speak, hearing his own personal experience, why he started the company, how he started it and how he just decided like, hey, this is something that I have to pursue. I don't have any option. This is something that I feel called to do. And I feel like with this opportunity, just being exposed to like community, being exposed to other opportunities, I'm like, I feel like I belong. And whenever he said that he felt like this was it for him. He's not starting any other companies. I was like, that's where we're all trying to be. We're all trying to be somewhere, at least for me. Like to find it. Exactly. To yeah. find that thing. And yeah. I feel like in for being- For me too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. In being with spa- in spaces such as this, talking with you, being in community with you, with Jai, Creative Futures, I feel like that's like an in way to getting that feeling as well. But I really just appreciated him being open and honest with his experience. It's It's been such a blessing. I just have so much gratitude for him choosing this life and choosing to go on with this company so yeah i do too Mm -hmm. i do too because it just it just who knows where your path is going to go just from exactly and mine too really right i feel like that because i mean i've been just impressed with everybody in it and Mm -hmm. i don't you don't know where anybody's going to end up and where your network is going to lead absolutely let me ask you this what's your favorite part about this whole experience just with meeting jai meeting everyone (laughs) meeting everyone (laughs) 100 percent. me too yeah because when when i walked in the first people i met was you Mm -hmm. and two other women that were just amazing mentees Mm -hmm. and they were just so cool so stylish so kind Mm -hmm. and so driven Mm -hmm. and i was just i've just been impressed with everyone just like to no end me too me too Mm -hmm. i think that's been my favorite part just meeting other people and seeing what they're involved in and being like this is so cool i feel like i could also be a part of this this is something i've never heard about before and now i have the opportunity to like be a part of it, yeah. you know? So it's you really been, do. It's it's just been a blessing. I love being around other creatives. There's just so much original thoughts. There's so much original inspired action. It's always like, hey, let's do this. Hey, let's do a photo shoot. Yeah. Hey, let's do a, you know, a video, something. It's always <laughs> something fun and creative and inspiring mm-hmm. and just... <sighs> I was laughing because like <laughs> they paired us up for a reason. I mean, like it's so obvious. Like, I was so happy. I was so happy. I told you the first time I spoke with you, I was like, I looked at your website. I was like, she is killing it. You know, oh, she you. has a book. She started playing the guitar. She has an album as well. She has a podcast. And like I said, I think my whole thing is like just tapping into that multidimensional part of yourself, knowing that you're not limited in one capacity, not putting yourself in one box and seeing you, you're like the walking embodiment of like how I see myself as well. And so <laughs> one of my, be- <laughs> one of my friends I saw in Miami the other day, she goes, you're the Madonna of all my friends. You just keep recreating yourself. And I was like, Endlessly. right, because we are multidimensional and we are multifaceted. Yes. And I could not have said that better. Thank you for the compliment as well, but I couldn't have said it better. We are. And you and I have a, have a similar outlook in that. I for think sure. we do. Mm-hmm. I think we do. Life is the playground. We just get to get all of these skills learning more, exploring more, finding out more about ourselves, growing, loving. I don't know. It's 
It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Thank you. Of course. I'm so, thanks for just stepping up here too Thank and sitting you. down for a minute. And, Thank you for being Oh my gosh. I love you. I love <laughs> you. Too. I'm so happy that you were here today too to be part of this. Thank you so, so much for being here. And Thank, Thank you. you so much for giving me this space. Absolutely. Well. How can everyone find you if they want to follow you and see your artwork too? So you can find me on Instagram at I-B-I-Y-E dot A. And then I also have my company at Anga House. So feel Good. free to I'll check me out I'll put links in the, in the notes too so Thank everyone you. can find you. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you stepped stepped over here and we did this. And um, thank you to everyone. Remember that you are a multidimensional, multifaceted being. And um, and that's why we're here. We've got this one life. So get out there and play and do anything that speaks to your heart. And I hope that this conversation with Jai and with Evie inspired you today and just sprinkled a little more of that magic dust on everything that's going on for your life today. So thank you for being here. Please leave a review if it spoke to you. Uh, follow them and sign up for my newsletter, amyedwards.com. It's super easy to do. And it is um, trying to bring a little value to your inbox every quickly, easily, because that's the way I like to do it. <laughs> like, how fast can I read this? Great. Um, all right. Well, I love you and love you too, Evie. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Hot Pie. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for being here. Um, yeah. Thanks so much. Keep keep on keeping on because uh, it does make a difference in your voice. It truly matters. Till next time. Comment and tell me your thoughts. And please subscribe to the channel for all things to up-level your life and increase your shine efficiently and through better habits, mindset shifts, and embracing your own power.